the chair, and he just has to stretch a little. Of course, you know, I've held this short my whole life because my father is 6'3", is and my brothers are 6'4", and 6'2". So being short is just, you know, at least feeling short has just become part of life. I'm actually 5'7", so I'm not very short of a woman. Yeah, so I should, you know, for a woman, I'm not very short, but in my family, I'm a little short one. And my poor mother is getting shorter. So the poor lady is shrinking. Logarithmic function, section 3.2. Let's see how long we get it. So, the things we're going to do, we're going to rewrite exponential equations in logarithmic form. We're going to rewrite logarithmic equations in exponential form. We're going to evaluate very simple logarithmic expressions. We're going to find missing pieces of logarithmic equations. We're going to find logarithmic e functions given a point. Yeah, right. We're going to graph. We're going to look at the graphs of logarithms. We're going to talk about what happens when you move them around. And then we're going to deal, deal with domains and ranges. Because what do you remember about my domain questions? You guys remember the domain questions? No, nope, not. Number three was, is there a log or a natural log? And bad news, starting today, you might have to say yes. Okay, well, I got through that part. All right. Let's start where we left off on Monday. Okay. I have a nice function, f of x equals some number times a, some number, some number times a to the x. I want to find the inverse of this. functions one-to-one -one so that they should have an inverse. Remember, what does it take for a function to be one-to-one? -one? You guys remember? No, what does it take? To what? what? First input f of x equal to one. Yeah, so that would be my first step, but I'm going to ask, why do I know that I can ask that the, the, for this to have an inverse? Okay, what does it take to be a function? If you look at the graph, what tells you? Ah, that's a function. The vertical line test. Okay, now that you remember that part, what does it take to tell if that function is one to one? The horizontal line test. Yeah, I figured if I brought lines in, you guys would get there. Would my exponential functions pass the horizontal line test? Yeah, they did, didn't they? You look, they they kept going up, 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 up. or down, 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 down. So I know I can find it, and as Jesus just told me. I need to start by making y, f of x into y, so I have c times a to the x. Okay, now what? Switch the y and the x, so I have x equals c times a to the y. Now what? All right, I can divide by c, x over c equals a to the y. Now what? We don't know that yet. Stop it. <laughs> I need to get to this y, yes? I need to be able to get something that is y equals. Well, this is where logarithms came in. They were the thing that allowed us to say, well, this exponent is equal to. And so what we have in our basic logarithms is this exponent, y, is equal to log base a of x over c. That's where logarithms first were defined in order to be able to talk about what is the inverse of this original function. And so they were defined as, here's how we're going to define it. Now, what's the plus with using logarithms? Well, if I have a number here saying 10 to the millionth, that's a pretty large number, yes? If I'm talking about logarithms, all I'm talking about is the millionth that's in the exponent. And I can do things with those exponents without having to deal with quite as large numbers as 10 to the millionth would have produced. Because a million only has how many zeros? Six. 
10 to the millionth has how many zeros? A million plus one more. No, it just says million. Because 10 squared is 2, so it would have million. So, in general, you have two forms for writing things when we have exponentials and logarithms. So we have exponential form, and we have an equivalent logarithmic form. The basic and exponential form is y equals a to the x. The same thing written in logarithmic form is x equals log base a of y. Now, remember, this was the base of our exponential function. Remember that last time? This is also referred to as the base of our logarithm. Keep in mind that the exponent is always what our logarithm is equal to. The logarithms produce the exponents. So, how many of you have got your calculators that you've seen somewhere? Do we, you have log base A on your calculator? You have log. You have log, and what else do you have? Natural log. What? Bounded. On your calculator, because there are two logarithms that are used often, one of them is called the common logarithm. On your calculator is written L of G. What that really means is log base 10. It was very common back before computers, printing was a pain, and making subscripts cost extra money. So where you needed, I know you're laughing, but it's true. Where you needed the same thing often enough, you would just learn to say, okay, well, everybody's just going to use this convention. Now the other thing that you see on your calculator is something called a natural log, and it is ln on your calculator. Remember what the natural exponential function was? It was the e to the x. So the base of your natural exponential function was e, the base of your natural logarithm is going to be e. So it's log base e. By the way, I know a lot of people ask why it's not nl natural log, well, because the French got to it first. It's log natural. That's why it's ln. Come on, gee, if those French people could just get their hands off math. If those French people had kept their hands off math, you wouldn't have calculus yet. Huh. Or somebody else probably would have come up with it, but you'd be all going, how do I have to get calculus? What? Yeah, well, no, yeah, then there's an English guy too. All right, we are going to start by, because one of the big things we need to be able to do in order to solve exponential and logarithmic equations is go from one form to the